Well, once you have your kite template uh, drawn completely, and after you cut it out, or even before you cut it out, you may want to uh, make a curved template. Uh, this is really useful when you want to make a curved shape and you can make the curve however severe you want it or as mild as you want it. I just use a 05 carbon rod and tape it down and bend it to create the shape I want and the shape isn't all that critical really uh, or at least I found that it isn't all that critical and then I'll just cut this out uh, just use a knife or a pair of scissors if you got them that'll cut this kind of material and uh, This serves as a model and like a secondary template, really, to create a curve in the trailing edge. Now, a lot of people like to have a trailing edge with a little bit of a curve in it. So it could be maybe something that looked like this. Whoops. I guess that curve wasn't very, <laughs> very accurate, was it? Well, you want a smoother line than that, that's for sure. Let's try it again. We'll try it on this side. <coughs> now, having a curved shape is something you can always put on the skin, even though it's not on the template. I usually make my templates with a straight edge and then use a guide like this when I'm cutting out the template. The same is true on the uh, nose. Uh, you can have the nose shaped straight with a straight line for the leading edge of the nose or you can curve it. And the same thing goes. I uh, would curve it but I would probably leave it straight on my template and use a guide like this to cut it when I'm actually cutting out the skin. Now one of the things that uh, I forgot to mention when we uh, started this project was that where you put the line for the wingtip line, where you put that along the spine line that you've drawn. Well basically I just kind of eyeball it and position it roughly halfway or a little bit a little bit towards the nose uh, or where I think the nose will be on the kite and then draw the spine uh, the wingtip line there and uh, other than curving the shapes of the leading edges of the nose and the trailing edges there aren't too many other things that uh, you can do to change the, the kite other than change the shape of the tail. Now the tail is an area where you can do an awful lot of changing. For example, let's say we wanted to have this particular point here uh, become, well let me measure that first. Okay, so that's about here. I'll put a batten line on this side as well. And then we could, if we wanted, change the shape of the tail completely of the kite. We could make a tail that looked like this, a V. Now this shape of tail, we would cut out this portion right here completely. So the kite would be, would have two tail points, each with a batten. 
Uh, this does a couple of things in flight. One, it allows the kite skin to wrap around the spine more quickly when you're tracking. So it tracks in a straight line a little more quickly coming out of a spin than a kite without this. And when you have this, the spin is usually a little slower uh, in its rotational speed than with, without this cutout here. So you just cut this out. Your template would look like this when you cut your kite skin. And that's the nice thing about using cardboard or, or mat board or an easy to work with material is that the uh, changes that you might want to make are really easy to make. So here's how the kite would look. And we'll just cut out uh, part of the... I usually use a utility knife to cut the kite's uh, template, but sometimes I use a pair of uh, actual uh, metal shears, uh, sheet metal shears. They work pretty well too if you have thick hard material that's hard that's difficult to cut with a utility knife. So here we would have a kite with a tail section that would look like this. Now if I were going to do this initially I probably would extend this portion of the spine a little bit further and maybe not make this quite so high. But th that's, that's an option. This would probably fly fine. Uh, generally speaking, when a kite is uh, wide <coughs> at the wingtips compared to its length, and almost all fighter kites have a longer wingtip length than the spine length, uh, they're usually about like uh, this the distance here might be 20 inches or 21 inches the wingtips but the spines are very rarely longer than 19 inches they might be on this one I don't know it might be 18 inches yeah 18 inches and the width here is uh, 20 inches so this is very typical of the proportions of you know, most fighter kites, and that's one of the reasons why they're unstable, is that they're wider than they are long. If you want a kite more stable, add length to this distance here between the wingtip line and the actual tail of the kite. If you add an inch or two or three and bring the line for the trailing edge down to that point, uh, the kite will become much more stable. And then as you become more comfortable flying it, you can just uh, take a pair of wire cutters or something and cut the spine off a little bit and then recut the trailing edge of the kite down to the new tail of the spine and uh, shorten it a little bit and fly that. And then you can continue that process until you find the approximate ratio of wingtip width uh, relative to the length of the spine that you're comfortable with and that you like flying and that seems to fit well with your style. And those are just a couple of the things that uh, you can add to your arsenal of design ideas. And I hope that uh, you find this to be uh, useful. I hope you put it to practice and actually come up with some interesting designs.